Hello guys, Chris here, welcome back to another video. In this one, my friends, I'm gonna be testing a GeForce RTX 3070 in Hogwarts Legacy. This one is the EVGA XC3 Ultra version of the card. We are running it with the latest NVIDIA drivers as usual, and I'm not manually overclocking it. You can see all of its specs right here in Tech Power Ups GPU Z, resizable bar is also enabled, and over on the left, we're pairing it with a Ryzen 7 5800X 3D and 32 gigabytes of RAM. Let's get into it, shall we? Let's go over the settings now I'm playing at 1080p resolution, we're also going to test this one at 1440p and 4k. I'm using DLAA as the anti-aliasing mode because it looks way better than TAA and it actually performs better than TAA high in this game, so it's a no-brainer. If you have an RTX GPU and want native resolution, DLAA is the way to go. Upscaling type is set to none at the moment, but we're also going to utilize some DLSS a bit later. Uh, down here, these are the settings and we're utilizing the recommended ended preset which is the high settings preset for the 3070 all right we're starting near hogsmeade this is native resolution once again on high settings this game is also really cpu intensive in this area in particular as well as hogwarts so we might see a cpu bottleneck here with the uh, why, why can't i land um with the ryzen 7 5800x 3d which is a really good cpu by the way i just restarted counting the fps by the way for some reason, don't know why. Uh, but yeah, if you have a slower CPU, like my friend who uses the 3070 has a Ryzen 5 3600 with it, you will see a major bottleneck, even dropping into the 50s here in this area. As you can see, even the 5800X 3D drops into the 70s. So I'm gonna avoid these areas for the most part in this video because they're more CPU bound, not as good to test GPUs with, and I'm gonna focus more or in uh, why are you clipping into the gr ground buddy like jack are you feeling all right i i can't see your front paws Enabling DLSS in Hogsmeade, by the way, would get you exactly the same FPS because, well, it's CPU bound and DLSS just lowers GPU load by a little bit. If it is frame generation on the 40 series, it can remove CPU bottlenecks, but we don't have that on the 30 series, unfortunately. Now, over here, you can see that we are fully GPU bound once again, 98% GPU usage with slightly lower FPS than in Hogsmeade or around the same. So this is what the GPU is truly capable of uh, in worst case scenario for it. And it is a really good experience overall, aside from those stutters, which can be mitigated by locking the FPS in River Tuner. Don't lock the FPS inside of the game, by the way, because it will get you a ton of stuttering issues. It's, it's really weird, this one. <sighs> Yeah, <laughs> okay, it is really weird indeed, it just proves my point, right? <laughs> Let's continue here, native 1080p shouldn't drop us from 60 frames per second, 69 is the minimum right there, that's, that's pretty good, you know, overall the experience is nice, especially if you lock it to 60 frames per second, you're gonna have a great time at 1080p with the 3070, high settings are way more intensive than medium settings by the way, so on medium you could achieve like a higher refresh rate experience but I really recommend you to play with high settings instead because they are way way better looking as well like the lighting and shadows are just unreal on high settings should we try it with DLSS? I mean, why not? a lot of people might want to play with DLSS on quality in this game because it does look better than TAA. Once again, it's a better experience than native resolution, unless you are playing with DLAA at native res. But as you can see, it jumps like crazy, the FPS. Yeah, that is just awesome. Of course, if you come across like Hogsmeade and Hogwarts using DLSS, it will drop to the same values that we saw previously, 70s and 80s with a ton of stuttering. So yeah, keep that in mind. But I can't deny this, this feels really good whenever it's not stuttering, okay? <laughs> and uh, like 140 FPS, you could lock it to like 120 and uh, have a pretty reasonable experience and get rid of those annoying little stutters right there. So yeah, it's definitely a good option to play with the 3070 if you have a 1080p monitor. And again, the DLSS implementation in this game is just magnificent. It looks and it gives you a ton of more FPS. 
I mean, it looks a ton of more FPS now. It looks great, and it gives you a ton of more FPS. <laughs> That's it, all right? Let's go over here, because I found this to be one of the most intensive parts, or GPU intensive. As you can see, dropping into the 130s, 120s at times. And down here, it's actually CPU bound. Like, CPU usage is low, but that doesn't mean that it's not CPU bottlenecked. That just means that the game doesn't use more than, like, four cores efficiently. And that's what we saw with, like, the i7-4770K in this video as well. So I'm going to disable this, set it to DLAA, set it to 1440p in the desktop, because it still doesn't have a full screen mode for some reason, and be back soon. Back here at 1440p using DLAA, no DLSS, and the high settings preset. Let's start counting those FPS. We're in Hogsmeade just so I can show you that it's pretty much the same thing as 1080p because we're still CPU bound. I mean, sometimes at least with the 5800X 3D and the 3070 here. And that the same goes for like my i5-13600K. That's a really strong CPU that also bottlenecks something like a 3070 in Hogsmeade. Like, the game is just not well optimized whatsoever. It's actually getting a little bit higher FPS than previously, but probably because the sun is not out yet, so it's not rendering in any shadows yet. Uh, it's morning time, by the way. So let's go back to the more intensive area uh, and pet Jack first. Yeah, we always got to pet Jack, of course. Otherwise, it's not a great benchmark. Also, the, the paws are clipping again. What the heck? Anywho, we are back here. I'm gonna take my broom out. See the FPS around here? It's high, it's lower than uh, Hogsmeade, of course. Getting down into the 60s. Look at that. All right, 3070 is a really good 1440p GPU. Of course, it's eight gigabytes of VRAM in the recent titles are a little bit of an issue, providing a couple of more stutters than other GPUs with higher amounts of VRAM, especially in the last of us but you know that's just a totally broken game overall i i would grab this card for 1440p gaming uh, or pair it with a 1440p monitor and it's going to be a really nice experience in most games so it's a great gpu handicapped a little bit by the vram but it still does a really good job here in hogwarts legacy um using the high settings with a lot of stuttering though i wish to see that fixed but it's been like three months since this game came out and it still stutters so it's not gonna happen guys i actually told you this <laughs> previously in in previous videos of hogwarts legacy performance won't really change that much and especially the stuttering will stay there because it's an Unreal 4 engine title. Pretty much all of those games with Unreal 4 engine stutter a lot. Anyway, you can get 60 plus FPS all of the time, I think. We've been to the most intensive area for the GPU to render, which is not the same as the most intensive area in the game in general, because that would probably be Hogsmeade. But you know what? With the 5800X 3D and the 3070, it ends up dropping more in forest areas. So. I guess we could say in this system, the overall most intensive areas are actually the forests. I stopped it right there. There is no need for you to utilize DLSS if you cap the FPS to 60 in this game at 1440p. But, you know, if you want a little bit higher frames with maybe slightly lower VRAM consumption because it renders the game at 961p on DLSS quality, well, you might want to use some DLSS quality, of course. So that's what we're gonna test right now. Can we get hundreds? Oh, yes. So we get like what, 25% more FPS or like 30% more FPS by enabling the LSS. That's really good in GPU bound scenarios, of course. In CPU bound scenarios, it's gonna be pretty much the same, as I told you. It also depends on the time of the day, as you saw, by the way, because uh, now that the sun is out and we got more shadows on screen, it should drop a little bit more in Hogsmeade. There we go, tons of stuttering issues once again. It's not gonna go anywhere if you don't cap the FPS, so I strongly suggest you to do so, either on NVIDIA Control Panel or Rivetuner Statistics Server, which is what I am utilizing to show you the on-screen display there, along with MSI Afterburner, if you're wondering. Um, so yeah, just install MSI Afterburner, it will automatically install Rivetuner and you can cap the FPS to whatever uh, values you want. Over here, in the most intensive area for a GPU to render, it's getting like 80s. 
not bad whatsoever. It's much more stable. If you were worried about dropping from 60 FPS at native 1440, the LSS will look almost the same, slightly more noisy and shimmery than native res with the LAA, but definitely better than like TAA on high. And uh, it will give you those 60 plus 100% of the times. Like we dropped to 64 back there and now it's getting it was getting like 80s or 90s or whatever so it's really really solid of an experience at 1440p and i really recommend this all right getting 90s 80s same thing as we saw previously but now since this is not gpu intensive it's cpu intensive the gpu usage is not maxed out so it's not doing much here and what we're seeing right now is basically what the 5800X3D can do in this game. Overall, it's a solid experience, of course, to be expected from a 3070. And now I am going to turn this off, set it back to DLAA and play at 4K high. All right, this is it. 4K resolution, way more intensive than everything that we tested so far. 2160p, DLAA, high settings. And even in Hogwarts, where we were seeing like 100 plus frames per second, we're now below 60 FPS at native res. But you know, at 4K with 3070, you should probably utilize the LSS. I would for certain, like I played for about a year with the 3060 Ti as my main GPU and I was playing at 4K on a 4K monitor with the LSS balanced or performance usually. And I was fine with that experience. So I bet if we enable the LSS here with 3070, it's going to become a way better experience. Also, that frame time graph is just, it's dead at this point. <laughs> Let's do quality here. Increase the sharpness just slightly at 4K. You don't really need that much sharpness with the LSS. And wow, it gave us 30 frames per second. We were in the 40s. Damn, of course, if I move, it starts dropping just a little bit. Honestly, I was expecting it to drop more with quality DLSS, not gonna lie. Yeah, not bad. GPU usage is still fluctuating, even at 4K. Like, this game is completely broken. Usually when you get to 4K, you don't see that much GPU utilization because it's, it's very GPU bound, right? But nope, <laughs> in Hogwarts Legacy and in Hogsmeade and Hogwarts, it's always gonna stutter a lot. Anyway, it is dropping into the high 50s at times with the LSS quality. It's not terrible though. Again, if you look to like 45 FPS, I believe that would be a really solid experience with the RTX 3070. And if you play with the controller, you could have like that console-like experience, last gen console. That's better than the last gen console-like experience. 45 FPS after all. It feels a lot better than 30 and the 3070 is certainly capable of doing that. You know what? Just so you know what I'm talking about, I'm going to demonstrate that. Lock it to 45 right there and look at that frame time graph now. It's actually feeling better then uh, unlocked FPS with 60-ish frames per second at times, just because it's not stuttery now. It's buttery smooth at the moment. Look at that. Sometimes there is going to be the odd little spike here and there that is noticeable, like that one, for example. But it's, it's rarer, and uh, I, I feel like this is just an awesome experience now. This is the way this game is meant to be played. Locking the FPS has a lot of advantages and benefits as well because you don't consume as much power for the first part. Like, as, as the GPU usage is not maxed out, it can chill for a little bit and utilize less power. Therefore, it's going to run cooler and, uh, well, the game overall runs smoother at the same time. So it's a win, 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 win. Everybody wins. Everything wins. It's amazing, <laughs> you know? And you know what? I will also demonstrate it with no FPS lock in Rivetuner, but with FPS lock here in the game. I can't lock it to 45, but if I lock it to 30, at 30 FPS, it would have been a flat frame time graph like previously. You can see like, this is not a flat frame time graph. It still stutters a lot, right? Look at that. How terrible is that implementation of an FPS cap? I, I, I didn't even know that developers could mess up a frame rate cap, but they certainly can, as you can see. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's it for 4K, right? 
Maybe I'm gonna try it with some uh, balanced DLSS here. And we can get 70, so another good bump up in performance. That's nice to see, guys. Okay. Let's sit down here, though. This is where the FPS dropped the most, as you know already. 60s. Lower 60s. I think it's gonna drop from 60, guys. Down there. Wait a second. Let's go. 62? No, it didn't drop. All right. You can cap it to 60 FPS, play with balanced DLSS, which at 4K looks really good, and get 69 FPS average with 60 minimum. Of course, 1% lows are, are wrecked, but that's just because of the frame time consistency or inconsistency, should we say. <laughs> now, lastly, how does it run with ray tracing? I totally do not recommend ray tracing in this game, by the way, because it makes things super inconsistent, even more inconsistent than previously, okay? And we're back to 1080p DLAA, using no DLSS at the moment, of course, high settings, ray tracing is now on, on high, and uh, it gets way lower FPS, of course, to be expected, it's getting 70s, it's also CPU bottleneck, look at that, ray tracing not only affects GPU performance, but also CPU performance by a lot, so you will be seeing a, a even bigger CPU bottleneck if you have RT on, if a 5800X 3D can't really max out 3070 at 1080p native res with ray tracing, there is not much out there that can actually max it out. Maybe a 13th gen CPU, but as I told you, the 13600K is really similar in performance to the 5800X 3D in this game, so maybe a 13700K overclocked or a 13900K. So basically you got two CPUs in the market and maybe the new Ryzen 7000 X3D versions uh, that can max out at 3070 with ray tracing in Hogwarts Legacy. And the game doesn't really look all that different, does it? Like it's pretty much the same thing. <laughs> if we fly close to the water to see those reflections, it's... I mean, it already looked like that previously. I just think the ray tracing, as well as ultra settings, are just not worth enabling in this game whatsoever. Now with DLSS things should be slightly better but since we were already CPU bound in other areas close to Hogsmeade it will still drop to the same values like 60s and stuff. It's, I'm not saying it's not playable, I, I'm just saying it's more enjoyable if you keep RT off as well as uh, the high settings because ultra settings look slightly better than high, they perform much, much worse, and high settings without RT is just the way to go, in my opinion at least. Have fun my friends playing this game on the 37th, you can definitely buy it if you haven't already. No worries performance wise, just make sure that you have a good CPU to go with it, because this is very CPU intensive in some areas, as I told you. And that's been it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. Catch you in the next one very soon. And as always, love you all. Bye-bye.